Hey guys, Big Red Three Tens here again to talk about his uh, King of Trios 2012 live report. Um, the weekend was absolutely incredible. I'm not gonna make this video too long, but I do want to describe kind of my weekend experience because I think, I really think this this convention this weekend is really underplayed. I mean, it's not like WrestleMania weekend where a lot of people come out, and I get that WrestleMania weekend's the be all and end all, and there's a lot of great shows. But really, I think you should really try to make your way to Chikara King of Trios weekend. Um, for one, most of you, most of you, it's not that far. I'd say a good portion of the people I've met on here are from the Northeast. And uh, honestly, if you're going to go out of your way to travel to Atlanta or Phoenix or Houston for WrestleMania, you can go out of your way to travel to Philadelphia for King of Trios weekend. It's one of the be It was one of the best weekends of my life. I put it right up there with WrestleMania weekend this past year. I had just as good of a time at both and I'll explain and I, I'm making a pitch as to why I think more people should go every year uh, for those who have been watching me for a long time know I'm a huge Chikara fan have been for a long time I would say Chikara has been my favorite promotion since late 2009 like almost not even a full year after me getting on here I think a lot of old forgotten Ring of Honor fans People who have been turned off by the Ring of Honor product, they would now they would now say their favorite promotion was Chikara or PWG. But back in 2010, 2011, I mean, everyone was straight diehard Ring of Honor fans. And throughout the whole time, I consider myself a big Ring of Honor fan, but a much bigger Chikara fan. I always have and always will. Um, Chikara has always been number one for me. Always. When as soon as I first started watching it, it was always in my heart my favorite promotion. And I'm glad that I'm kind of glad that Ring of Honor has been turning off a lot of fans the past few months because a lot of people have been trying to try out Chikara more, and hopefully that makes them enjoy the product more. Um, this show, this weekend was, like I said, absolutely amazing. I'll go into it in depth, but uh, f first off, I so I left, I left to Pennsylvania. I met my friend Brian. Um, he, he's the one that did two videos with True Slayer. I had him on the interview series show. Soda Papinski eighty two on Twitter. Uh, what used to be next big thing on YouTube, but now he's sort of Papinski82 on YouTube because his next big thing account got taken down. But you all should have some idea of who he is. He did those videos with True Slayer and such. Good guy. And uh, I, um, I traveled down with him. I met him up in Pennsylvania, and we went down to, we went down to uh, Easton, Easton, PA. We had a hotel right outside of the arena, and uh, the first night. So we get there and we get in line, and uh, he's not sure what time we should get in line. I'm like, I'm pushing for us to, the show starts at 7.30, bell time at 7. I'm pushing for us to get there by 5.45. And he's, no, I, I pushed for us to get there by 5, and he was fighting me on it. Like, 5, dude, that's two hours. That's a little too early, don't you think? And I'm like, I don't know, dude, I think it's going to be packed. And then we got there, we compromised to 5.45, and when we got there, of course, it was packed. Uh, but it wasn't that bad. Like, it was bad, but it wasn't that bad, as we'll get to. Like, we were, like, right outside the vent. There was a line outside the door. We were, like, right outside the door, which isn't that bad, as I'll get into later. But anyways, two of Brian's friends um, that hooked Brian up at Chikar Source Rex. At Chikar Source Rex, they, gave, they, they helped Brian get a good seat. Those two guys came up to us. They knew Brian, and they were like, yo, can we, like, cut, cut in front of the line to get with you guys? And we're like, yeah, sure, we don't care. And uh, we talked for a little bit. There, one of them was a big Chikara fan, so that was nice. We got inside, and <clears throat> we got inside, and immediately we kind of went to the back. Uh, we, we originally had a seat, like, 10th row in front of the ring um, uh, on the left of the hard cam side. But then Brian said, yo, let's go on the other side in the last row, which is around the same. It's around the same view because they didn't have as many rows on the other side. And last row is better, in his opinion, because you could stand um, when you couldn't see anything, and it would be okay, because there was no one behind you. And I kind of agreed with him, so I'm like, okay, sure, let's go try last row. And it actually worked out great. We were able to see fine. And like he said, whenever you couldn't see, you just stood. Like, towards the end, when the near falls were picking up, like, we all kind of knew when to stand. So we would stand for, like, the last three minutes, and we saw everything just fine. As far as the actual show, night one was fun. Um, it's exactly what I expected. It was a good show live. Um, I would say the two best matches live were the opener, Sendai Girls and Colony. Sendai Girls got over huge the entire weekend. I actually wanted them to win by night three because I just fell in love with them so much. And uh, the Team ECW, Team WWF, that was so entertaining. Such an entertaining match. Both those matches were real, real good. Uh, the Batiri Team, Buyakuma, 
or 3.0 in Gran Akuma. That was a fun match. Osaka Pro and Fist was a great comedy match. Uh, Quackenbush, Toyota, and Jig versus The Swarm was, you know, a good, solid match. I enjoyed it. Uh, throwbacks versus JWP. You know, it wasn't bad. I would say it was pretty... I'd say it was barely good, maybe decent. You know, it wasn't bad. It just didn't go very long. The worst match of the night, I thought, was uh, Mysterious and Handsome Stranger, Tito Santana, and... And uh, what's that guy's fucking name? Hi Rai? Hi Rai, I think. He Rai? Oh, one of him. One of the Osaka Pro guys. Them three versus uh versus uh the Spectral Envoy. Uh kind of the running the sm- the submission squad could not get to the show because of travel reasons. And so the first night they said we are sorry to announce that the submission squad couldn't be here. And there were yes chants. <laughs> like everyone was so happy. And then it became a running joke. Nights two and night three. Gavin Loudspeaker would start the show by saying, okay, we have to start off with some unfortunate news. The submission squad couldn't be here. And they're loud, loud cheering and round of applause from the audience. They did that the second and third nights, I guess, to get a pop. It was really funny stuff. But that match was just okay because the crowd really, it was long, and the crowd really wanted to see Tito Santana. So they were kind of delaying bringing him in the ring because he is old. And then eventually, like two minutes before the end of the match, they brought him in. He did a few spots. The crowd liked that. But the first 14 minutes, they weren't that interested because they just really badly wanted to see Santana. It was okay. It wasn't bad, but definitely the worst match in the show. Um, the power, the faces of pain versus the Young Bucks and Mike Bennett. This was a good match. I thought Haku, me and Brian talked about this. Haku may not be conditionally in good shape, but we thought he was in good ring shape. Like, you know, he could, he, uh, you know, he knew how to work. He knew how to construct the match. He laid out some good spots, and I thought he was very entertaining. I was very happy with their performance. I thought this match was good. And the main event, like I said, very, very entertaining. Team WF, Team ECW. I don't want to spoil any spots. Just go out of your way to see it. It was a lot of fun. Then that night, me and him went to Denny's, which is always a great late-night meal. And then we went back to the room watching ACH and Mr. Touchdown, which which was a great, great, great match. I'll review those shows in my next All Sides of the Wrestling World. You guys should go see that. And uh, we also saw ACH and Jacob Hammermeyer on night one, which is a terrible match. Probably the worst match I've seen all year. Um, we were both laughing at how terrible it was. It was so bad. We saw it several times. We kept playing like on both on nights two and three. He would always like whenever we were bored, he would just go like, yo, put, put on the ACH, put on the ACH Jakob Hammermeyer match. I'm like, okay, let's watch it. It was absolutely unequivocally a horrendous, horrendous match, but it was, it was funny. Like, we just could not stop watching. I think I gave it a quarter star or something like that because I just found it so... Actually, I gave it half a star because I found it so intrinsically entertaining. It was probably a worse professional wrestling match than Michael Elk and Charlie Haas, which, as I recall, I gave it dud. But that match, I, that match, the booking just pissed me off so much more. So I guess that's why it's rated lower. But as far as an actual wrestling match, this was worse. This was one of the worst matches I've seen in a long time. But it was a lot of fun. So... Then the next morning, we wake up, we go to the Fan Conclave. If you guys have never been to Jakar's Fan Conclave, you really should. I think the Fan Conclave is absolutely amazing. Brian was telling me how the ROH convention at WrestleMania Weekend in Atlanta was terrible because, because you paid to get in, and then you had to pay to take pictures with all the guys. And he just thought that that was such a waste of time. Why the fuck do you even pay to get in if you just, you're paying for the opportunity to pay? And I agreed with him. I thought that was ridiculous. Um... So, uh, so I was like, yeah, you're right. That's bullshit. And I was like, uh, but I don't think, I think it's different here. And here in this convention, as we saw, you pay to get in and then almost every wrestler gave you a picture for free. Every wrestler, one by one, you went up to them and you were like, yo, can I get a picture? No, or what, or or we would say like how much for a picture? And they would just go, ah, come on. You pay to get in here. Just come in. Like Dasher Hatfield, uh, Brian, Brian took a lot of my pictures. So I don't have a lot of them on me, but like Dasher Hatfield, Took this great picture, took this great picture, uh, this great picture where, um, where, um, you, Dasher Hatfield is the catcher and you line up as a hitter and you line up to swing. That was awesome. I took a great picture with 3.0 that I'll probably post on this video somewhere. Uh, I had a great picture with Osaka Pro and Chuck Taylor, a great one with Gavin Loudspeaker. I don't have that one. Brian has that one, unfortunately. Where basically, like some wrestlers, the traditional wrestler picture is sticking out the fist, which is nice. But some wrestlers decided to be creative, like Gavin Loudspeaker decided to put the fist at my face, and so I had to sell his punch. I even got a picture with Wayne Vavasour, which was hilarious. I gave him the cam- I, I went up to him with a camera, and I'm like, 
yo, is there any way I can take a picture with you? I, is there any way I can take a quick picture? And he was like, yeah, sure. And he took my phone and he was like, how do you work this thing again? And I was like, uh, and he was like, I'm just kidding. Come here. So that was nice. Uh, very, very, very cool guys. All the guys were just so nice. You got to interact with the wrestlers. Like you could play, uh, you got to play sports with Mr. Touchdown. You can try to score a goal on him. Dasher Hadfield, you, you could do one-on-one reps with him in football. Like you have to go out for a pass and try to beat him and catch the ball. It was just so much fun. You really feel like you're part of the action. And Mr. Touchdown was a gimmick the entire time, which to me was nice because I feel like it feels like you get to interact with these fantasy land characters on TV. And that was awesome. Dasher Hatfield, super nice guy. He knew Brian from before. And uh, me and him, me and him got along real well. I talked a lot to Johnny Gargano, who said he who said he's seen my videos and he's a fan. He even mentioned he even mentioned that he was in my Fave Five. I was thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly jo- overjoyed when I heard that. I was like, wow, that's awesome. And then I bought a shirt from him because I am a fan. And in his, on his Twitter, he said that he would give you a T-shirt if he told you he would, get, he would trade you a T-shirt for a secret. If you bought the T-shirt, you got a secret. And he told me the secret, special secret. And unfortunately, I cannot reveal it on this video because eh, it's a secret. You want to hear it? Go buy his T-shirt. What do you want me to say? Uh, but I was... He was a super nice guy. Ultra Mantis was a great guy. Chuck Taylor. I talked to Chuck Taylor for a little bit. He was like, he told me he's been wrestling training since he was 15, which to me is just amazing that he started working. He started, uh, he started working in Chikara when he was like, uh, when he was, I think 20 or 19 that he's, that's just, he's known forever. That's just what he's wanted to do. So he didn't hold anything back. He just went for it at such a young age. He was officially trained by the age of 17 started working in PWG when he was 20, 21. Like, it's just an amazing, amazing stuff. And I talked to him. He was just a super cool guy. Super funny. Super funny. And he, he's gotten a lot better shape. Brian Brian mentioned this, that he's gotten a lot better ring shape. Uh, it's clear that he's very, he, now that he's out of college, he's taking his stuff very, very seriously. But he was so nice. All the, all the guys are just great. My favorite, Gavin Loudspeaker, you can tell. Like, he, he, he gave a speech on night three saying, like, how much he loved Jakar and how important King of Trials weekend was to her. And it was very heartfelt. And during the fan conclave, you would just go up to him and ask him for a picture. And it was very clear, like, it meant a lot that you as a fan were there. And he was, like, so overjoyed to take a picture with everyone. He was awesome. Uh, Brian has a picture of Soldier Ant playing, uh, playing Battleship with a five-year-old, which is a hilarious picture. Absolutely hilarious. It basically describes the weekend in a nutshell. Oh, and another thing we did, uh, me and... Uh me and Brian play basketball with this uh, with this Asian dude that we didn't know, and Jonathan Barber, referee Jonathan Barber. That's right. We played. We were doing pretty well. We were beating them. I think three to zero, four to zero, four one. I forget. We were beating them, and then uh, I cut across. Well, I cut across the Asian dude. Brian threw the ball towards me, and then I caught again. And I don't think he realized I was cutting again because it was bad communication on my part. And the ball bounced off my hand and flew into the Batiri merchandise table and knocked over a coffee cup all over their merchandise. <laughs> oh, my God. And, like, Jesus, as soon as the Batiri came by. Because the Batiri, apparently, apparently we had heat. Because apparently Cobalt, who, as you all know, is on my man crush list. Apparently Cobalt, apparently I said something bad about him when he first started working in Jakara. And apparently he thought that I had a grudge against him. But uh, so he when he saw me not when he saw that it was me that did it, he just went to me. and He's like, ah, I see this is your way to get discount off our merchandise. But uh, I helped them clean up. Nothing was really damaged. I think one shirt was stained, but that wasn't a big deal. I mean, knowing professional wrestling, they probably washed it and resold it anyways. Everything was cleaned up nicely. And then I bought a sh- I bought Cobalt shirt and I showed it to him. And I was like, hey, I bought your shirt. And he was like, oh. Want me to sign? And he signed it for me. <laughs> it was like a complete 180 from his initial reaction. So I think me and the Bateria are now on good terms. But yeah, the Conclave was so much fun. It's an absolutely amazing experience. If you go to King of Trios, you have to do the Fan Conclave. Absolutely have to. Oh, this has gone, this has gone a little underreported, but uh, Kaz and Christopher Daniels were there. I don't think a lot of people know that. I haven't heard a lot of talk about it. But Kaz and Christopher Daniels were there taking pictures. $5 only. It was funny. When me and Brian were walking up, Brian's like, how much do you think they're going to charge for pictures? 10 20 and we get up and Kaz and Dan's just like five dollars and then we talk and then uh, I asked how much to have Claire Lynch in the picture and there and Kaz just goes oh uh you have to go to the Popeye studio exhibit in Universal Studios in order to get that sorry buddy <laughs> which was nice but and we told them like yo you guys got to work in the trios next year because me and Brian came up with team TNA uh, Kaz Daniels and Jeff Jarrett 
or, or, or Bully Ray as a sub if they couldn't get Jeff Jarrett. And I was like, yeah, come on. You guys got to be a part of Team TNA next year. And they're like – and they basically said, hey, if we were – if we could, we would. But I think they want to. They just need approval from the front office. But I don't know why TNA doesn't just approve them. I mean, honestly, it's King of Trios. It's just supposed to be fun. Hell, Sean Waltman, he, his pictures were free. You know how big a st- – same with Tommy Dreamer. Sean Waltman and Tommy Dreamer, two guys who are big, big, big stars, the two biggest stars of the weekend probably. Maybe I guess Haku included. Those two were charging free pictures. Only in Shakara, ladies and gentlemen, because it legit felt like – Everyone was there for fun. Everyone there felt like a fa- – it was like a family experience. You legit felt part of something being there. It was just great. Night two was pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to remember this show. This show uh, – I remember uh, Osaka – JWP and Fist had a good match. Uh, touchdown and, and Wallman had a very disappointing match. It went kind of short. It was clear to me that Wallman was hurt. Uh, Osaka, uh, Batiri, and Envoy was very fun. Osaka Pro Fist was a good tag team match. I enjoyed that match. Uh, Quack Jig and Toyota versus Sendai was really, really good. Like, really good. Uh, Sendai, again, they're great. I, I, when they beat Quack's team, I really wanted them to go all the way. And I told Brian, okay, tomorrow you put, you put Team Sendai against Fist. You put ROH against Envoy. And then you put ROH and Sendai in the finals. It will be an awesome match. And Sendai will win and everyone will go crazy. Um... And then they also had uh, Sugar Dunkerton and Tatanka. That match was good live. I've seen some reviews, though. A lot of people, I guess, didn't like it on DVD. But live, I thought that was a good match. I thought it was a fun match. I thought both guys did a good job. Uh, I think I'm missing a match. What was after Tatanka Dunkerton? Was it Kings? Oh, no. Team ROH and Team ECW. That was another very good match. That and the Sendai Quacks team match were the two best trios matches tonight. Both of those matches were very, very good. And Kingston to Daisuke was a very good to great main event. Very stiff, very hard hitting. Tadaisuke landed right on his fucking head off the backdrop driver. Like, right on his fucking head. And me and Brian both looked at each other with, like, a ghost face. Like, holy fuck. This guy landed on his fucking head. Legitimately. Like, there was no way to shield it. Cranium on top of canvas. Like, 180 degrees down. Or, I guess, 90 degrees down. Whatever. Uh, But just absolutely, absolutely crazy stuff. But it was a very, very, very good match. And the Tim Don segment afterwards was great. Uh, night two, we were both really tired. We kind of just both went to bed, I think. But night three, night three, uh, night three, we went out to eat. We got it. We, not by the way, night two, we got there 30 minutes beforehand and we're all the way in the back of the line and we still were able to sit last row, but we instead moved from last row to the bleachers because it was a, it was a better view and we could see all the wrestlers like backstage. So we even saw Kerry Silk. Yes. The night of the ring of honor, death of Fort Sonner, death of Fort Sonner 10, death of Fort Sonner 11. Uh, Kerry Silken was at Chikara, so take of that what you will. Uh, then night three, we got there really early. We got there like two and a half hours early, and we got fifth row. We could have gotten fourth row, but I was looking for third at the time, and I couldn't find third. And I saw fourth row, but I couldn't find Brian, and then fourth row got taken, so we sat fifth row. But fifth row was just fine. We saw everything absolutely perfect. Um, absolutely perfect. Uh, so Team ROH comes out, and I'm like, oh boy, it's going to be ROH on void, because before the show, when they were saying, who do you want to win? I, I shit you not, on, uh, Sendai Girls got a louder pop than Envoy did. Plus, I didn't think Envoy would win because I thought that they would do the Ultramantis thing. Where, like, Ultramantis, Ultramantis, Ultramantis Black, uh, Ultramantis Black, um, Ultramantis has never won anything in Chikara, like, in 10 years. And I thought that wasn't a coincidence. I thought he's supposed to be, like, the Tommy Dreamer. Where he doesn't win anything, but he's over anyways. Eventually, Tom Dreamer did win things, of course. But I thought that's how they were going to do Ultramantis. But I guess I was wrong. But uh, ROH and Envoy was still a very good match. Very stiff. Uh, Nick Jackson apparently felt really bad when he when he super kicked uh, one of the Sendai girls. But she said, hey, that's how we like it. So uh, what are you going to do? Then we had Envoy and Fist, which was another very good match. Both those matches were about on the same level. Then Saturnina and Ophidian, which was a good match. The Tag Gauntlet, which was fun. A lot of nostalgia teams... I've never heard Brian mark out as loud as I as loud as he did when Demolition came out. When Demolition's music hit, this man was so ecstatic. And I, and Brian, like if you know him, he's kind of a mild mannered guy. Like he'll mark out here and there. He'll yell at the real stiff stuff. But damn, when Demolition came out, this guy jumped to his feet in excitement. And I could very much understand. That was a great, great moment. The Devastation Corporation, which who were okay, they weren't that bad. But the the Demolition were great. Then Powers of Pain came. Then one, two, three, kid, and Marty Jannetty were a very fun tag team, and I guess we're gonna see more of them in Chikara because they have two points. So 
They were very fun. The crowd popped for them. It was a very fun, nostalgia-like match. Then when we got back, we had the greatest comedy match in the history of professional wrestling. Osaka Pro and 3.0 versus one of the Osaka Pro guys, Cole Cabana, Swamp Monster, and Darkness Crabtree. I will not ruin this match. Just know that it is the funniest match I've ever seen in my life. It is the greatest comedy match in the history of professional wrestling. If I could give it a star rating, I would give it four and a half stars. It is that, that, that absolutely, absolutely comically wonderful. Then, uh, the arguably the match of the night, Toyota and... Uh, Manami Toyota and Kaori Yonayama versus Subasa Kuragaki and Commando Bolshoi. Uh, this match was awesome. The crowd live, this was amazing. Everyone loved it. Everyone was marking out for all the real stiff stuff. The ending was absolutely wonderful. Go see this match right now. Just a great professional wrestling match. Uh, Commando Bolshoi, Subasa, and Greenet apparently sang Run DMC at a karaoke bar the next few days. That's amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Then we had Tadaisuke and Jigsaw. I was a little disappointed. I thought they were going to do Eddie Kingston and, and Haku, but I guess they couldn't get Haku on a third night. I thought I guess they can only get him on night one because I, th I thought it was strange that Eddie Kingston only wrestled one night the whole weekend. But we had Tadaisuke and Jigsaw, which I thought was going to be very good, but it was kind of short. I, to me, this was the, the second worst match of the weekend behind uh, Sean Waltman and Touchdown. Uh, it's just, I don't know. It's just It was kind of short, and Jigsaw got kind of squashed. Me and Brian talked about this, that we both like Jakar a lot. I love it. I guess I guess he probably loves it too. We both said that but the booking of Jigsaw is very confusing. He loses to everyone. He's dropped to Jakob Hammermeyer, Grizzly Redwood, uh, Ophidian. He loses to God, uh, Brody Lee. This man puts over everyone. But when the Eddie Kingston title defense came around, they put him over Tim Donst, who was needing the win at the time. And he beat Kingston in the tag, then he lost to Kingston, then he lost to Jakob, then he lost to Ophidian, and now he just gets buried by Tadaski. I guess Chikara thinks that he's like the perennial Chikara main eventer, that he could just job, 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 and job, and people still see him as a star. I don't think it works like that, but that's how they view it, I guess, because Tadaski just squashed him here, I thought. Uh, then the main event, Envoy and ROH. I don't want to ruin the ending, but no, it was amazing live. The crowd popped huge for it. I mean, I mean, I've, I've obviously already spoiled the winner, but like the ending, the last few minutes of the match were just amazing. It really felt like a WrestleMania-like main event. It really, really did. It had that big match feel, and everyone popped big time towards the end. Just an absolutely awesome show. That show, Night 3, was, damn, was a damn, damn great show. In my opinion, you had two great matches, the best comedy match in professional wrestling history, two very good semifinal matches, a very fun tag gauntlet, a good Ophidian Saturday match, and a squash. But that show, like on its own, was probably like the second best Jakar show of the year. But the whole weekend was just so much fun. Conclave so much fun. Everyone, please try to go to King of Trios next year. I'm telling you, it's one of the funnest experiences I've ever had. I'm definitely, definitely, definitely going to do everything I can to go again next year. I mean, the tickets are only 86 bucks for all three nights. And I guess if you, if you get your transportation worked out of the way, like me, I can just take a train there. Obviously, some people have to fly, and that's significantly more expensive. I can take a train... Uh, I can do that for. I bought my tickets at the right time, so my train ticket, my train ticket there was forty bucks, and coming back was like thirty-five because I bought them early. So really, I mean, that's not. And then you're just worried about food and hotel expenses. That's really not that bad, honestly. Like it's very, very affordable. If you can't afford to go to WrestleMania weekend, if that is your excuse for not going to Mania weekend that you can't afford it, fine, go to King of Trios because with a year planning. I fucking tell you, it is goddamn impossible to not be able to afford to go King of Trios with a year planning. But yeah, it was a real, real fun show. One of my favorite weekends of the year. Everyone, please try to go next year. I look forward to seeing you all there. Chakara, damn great job. And I already have my ticket for the, no for the no November show in New York. Uh, so I'll see you guys then. But for that, I'm Big Earthy 10. Thank you all for this. Hope you've enjoyed it. Go to King of Trios, everybody. I'm out. Goodbye.